Hello. In this video, we will continue our discussion with uh, our discussion of level three implementation. So we talk about level one, which defines what task is computed. This is the computational level in which we describe the function that is being computed. And then level two, the algorithmic level in which we define, well, how is that uh, function computed? Here we have to characterize the process and the representations that carry out that function. So we must decide then how those representations and algorithms are physically implemented. Since, as we know, there is a one-to-many relationships between one level and those below. Because, and so the same algorithm can be implemented in, in different physical mechanisms. So again, if we go back to the problem of addition, we see that uh, we want to perform addition and suppose that we have settled on one algorithm and one kind of representation. So how are we going to physically implement them? So are we going to implement the digits? Suppose that uh, we have settled for digits, of course. Are we going to implement it as positions on the mail wheel? Or as beads as an abacus? Or as binary coded decimal numbers implemented in the electrical states of a digital logic circuitry? Well, that's the kind of question. So the three levels go like this. These are the three levels at which any machine carrying out an information processing task must be understood. And it's the computational theory in which we ask, well, what is the goal of the computation? What is it appropriate? And what is the logic of the strategy by which it can be carried out? Then we have the level of representation and algorithm. How can this computational theory be implemented? What is the representation for input and output? And what is the algorithm for that transformation? And then the, the one of hardware, where, where hardware can be mechanical, electronical, or chemical, like our brains, right? Organic chemistry. How can the representation be, be realized physically? Some general characteristics of Mars' approach. Set, first, it's said to be hierarchical. It's said to be a hierarchy of abstraction. Each level is somehow said to be more abstract than those below it, in one sense of abstraction. Second, as we saw, a level stands in a one-to-many relation with those below it. So for each individual level one proposal, there is more than one level two algorithm that can implement it and so on. Also, Mars' approach is top-down. Why is it top-down? Well, we begin with a more abstract or general, right? We start with a well-defined computational analysis and then proceed downwards to the most specific problem of an appropriate specific algorithm and representation. And once you have a level two proposal, you proceed downwards, as, as it were, to the problem of implementation. Of course, it's not a rigid order. You can always have a, a upward feedback uh, work. You, you can perhaps be halfway through problem one, and then there are some problems that can only be solved by uh, getting on with level two, and so on and so forth. Right? It's just a, a general logic of the approach. And so. Just to finish, what are the uh, key points of Mars' proposal? Well, the tri-level hypothesis has been very fruitful and influential in cognitive science. It has been has clarified the way in which the different disciplines that are involved in cognitive science can, can relate to each other, how cognitive psychology can relate to artificial intelligence, and how can both relate to cognitive uh, neuroscience, for instance. It also stresses that studying only one level is insufficient for understanding the functioning of an information processing system. It is not enough studying just the, the computation that is being done. It is not enough to just study the algorithms that is being computed. It is not enough to uh, understand just the physical implementation. You have to understand how those fit together as one uh, single system. Third, it provides a classic example of top-down analysis as opposed to a bottom-up approach. And so the power of the approach is not only on, on how it divides the labor of all the disciplines, but in the integration of all these three levels and how it provides a framework for putting them all together into a bigger picture. That's what really gets powerful. And of course, it helps bring together, as we said, the contributions of different disciplines by locating them at different levels of the same hierarchy. So you can locate again the contributions of psychology as falling into the same hierarchy as the contributions of neuroscience. So, however, that doesn't mean that some phenomena can be more naturally explained at one level than, than others. 
right? So you can't force then this approach into, into any phenomenon. Okay, see you later. Bye.